oldest inhabitant desires to be exonerated from any intention to state what is not strictly true as, excepting in a few instances, her own memory has been solely relied on for dates, and many of the impressions having been imbibed in the earliest stages of childhood, even if literally true, may naturally be somewhat vague and shadowy. Today are spilling the tea everywhere, I'm told, which sounds very Bostonian to me. But in the interest of public curiosity, the Lynchburg Museum system asked if I could, as Lynchburg's oldest resident, at least sip some tea and share my perspective on some of Lynchburg's citizens. Being one who enjoys brewing and sipping the tea, I was surprised they hadn't asked me before now especially when it was explained to me that the tea is code for hot gossip. Well, you know here in Virginia, we prefer iced tea, but nobody wants cold gossip. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me, but Charles Lynch Sr., the patriarch of the Lynch family in America, left the north of Ireland and came to the colony of Virginia in the early part of the 18th century. The cause of his leave in Ireland, besides getting tired of potato and leek soup every day, seems to be some sort of conflict at school. Meeting soon thereafter with the captain of a ship which was on the eve of sailing for North America, Charles was easily persuaded to avail himself of the opportunity of embarking on the broad wave of the Atlantic meaning that much like Edward Murphy some 150 years after him, he was coming to America. The ship in which Charles took passage was but a short distance from port when young Lynch plunged himself into the sea and made for land. He was, however, brought back aboard and the vessel resumed her course. It seems Charles wanted to be rid of the sailors he'd spent months with as much as Ireland wanted to be rid of Charles. It has been stated in an extract from the St. Louis Republican, because the Midwest has nothing better to talk about, that Mr. Lynch took up a large body of land on the James River in sight of the Peaks of Otter, just below what would become Lynchburg. Charles was said to possess naturally pleasing and graceful manners which would have been on full display as he swan-dived into the Atlantic from the side of a ship. Eventually, Mr. Lynch represented the counties of Campbell and Bedford in the House of Burgesses, which then sat at Williamsburg. In a turn of events that boggles the mind, it is said he was elected to this honorable office without his knowledge. Thankfully, he didn't try to avoid this duty by jumping off the figurative ship of civic life. Soon after Charles's death, his son, John, inherited the land which is now Lynchburg. Rumor has it that John Lynch, had he been Roman Catholic like his father, Charles, and not Quaker like his mother, Sarah, would have been an actual saint. But that's none of my business.